Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to International, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. Welcome to Ball and Play, Episode 2. My name is Sesma, your host. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we've been primarily on just podcasts, hearing podcasts. This is our second episode with uh, us on video. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, today we got a lot to go over. Um, just like what our intro talked about, we've been talking about anything with a stick and ball. We don't focus on other sports. We just talk straight up baseball. So again, thank you. Welcome to the channel. Um, let's get into it right away. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about NCAA. Got some great news with NCAA and both baseball and softball today. Uh, also, we're going to be talking Lightum. There's a lot going on with Dominican ball right now. Uh, we're going to talk about the CBA, of course. Blitzball, wiffle ball, uh, Sia Suzuki. Mark Kotze is in the news. We're going to talk about a little bit more divisions, but more of today at the end of the podcast, we're going to talk about like what if. Like, what if this player had like a normal season? Where would we, where would they would have been? Uh, Juan Soto, Matt Chapman. So we're talking about a lot of stuff today. So let's go ahead and get this started. Welcome to Ball and Play. Uh, first thing I want to go over real quick, as soon as I can tab over to the right tab, is I want to talk about our listeners, the people downloading. Uh, we're more than 51% on iTunes. I want to thank everybody out there for downloading. Pandora, Apple Podcasts, Apple Chrome, uh, I mean Google Chrome, those are our big downloads. But again, to remind everybody, we can be found on a lot of places. Oh man, sorry man, throat's getting a little, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, Audible, Pandora, TuneIn, Plus Alexa, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Listening Notes, or Listen Notes, Podcast Addict, Deezer, Overcast, Podkit Cast. Say that 10 times fast. Castro, Castbox, and Bullhorn. Those where you can download our information. So please download, support us. Check out the links that are in the, the information box of the podcast. Uh, we're super excited to be bringing uh, more baseball to you guys on the podcast. It's going to continue to grow. We plan on doing this mainly towards the beginning of the season, but we jumped right into it. Now, a couple things. I know we're in the lockout right now. We're missing out on winter meetings, Rule 5 draft, salary, salary arbitrations aren't going on, uh, but Hall of Fame should be announced at the end of the month. But what we're going to, again, we're going to talk a lot of different stuff today. Um, obviously all baseball related, but you know, let's start off with NCAA news. Now, I've talked to you guys about this before. Uh, we've actually posted this on our on our YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel, uh, there's a player, you know, and if you know my background, uh, I come a, from a big family, that's my dog down there, chewing on his toy, so you're gonna hear little squeaks every now and then. It's Doug, you know, what are you gonna do? He's having fun. Um, we've talked about this person before, but I come from a family, I'm last of five, uh, military family, uh, soft, baseball, softball, athletic family, um, it's just how it is. It's what I was raised in in San Diego, California. So I was always exposed to all types of ball, uh, any type of wiffle ball, baseball, stick ball, softball, co-ed leagues, you know, men's leagues. Oh, there's our cheering. That didn't, I wasn't supposed to come in. Okay, and I've talked about this before. Um, again, to digress, I like to highlight any type of sport. I love baseball. That's primarily what we talk about, Major League Baseball, but... You know, if you understand what I'm talking about, if you come from a sports family, uh, you have brothers and sisters that play softball, uh, or, you know, sisters that play softball and you play baseball, it's a baseball family, and that's what I was used to growing up. Uh, 
Okay, hold on. Doug, I gotta take this from you, dude. I can't have you squeaking all the time. Sorry, I'm back. I love my dog, but I can't have you squeaking with your squeak toys right now. So anyhow, let me digress. Sorry about that, guys. Um, he actually has his own YouTube channel also. And uh, Doug the Dog's Life on IG. So check out my dog. Shout out for Doug. What's up, buddy? All right, I'll bring him in real quick. Come here. Come here, buddy. Oh, come to the podcast. Oh, this is Doug Bug. This is little Doug. He loves squirrels, sticks. Chasing the ball, hiking. He's an awesome adventure dog. Anyhow, excuse me. Let's go ahead and get started. So, again, because of my background, I do highlight everything. And it's hard for me not to highlight softball because I had so much family involvement in softball and baseball growing up. So, if you're new to the podcast, you're going to be like, man, he's talking about college division one softball. Yeah, of course I am. I'm talking about everything, even softball to the smallest leagues. If you guys follow us on Baseball News Club at IG, I post stuff for everybody all day long. Doesn't matter if it's wiffle ball, blitz ball, over the line, uh, college, MLB, international. We post stuff daily on everything with a ball and stick. So what I want to highlight right now real quick with NCAA, we posted this on our YouTube channel. Next section. Uh, we posted it on the YouTube channel. Um, Arizona State University has a player that I really like to highlight. Uh, Janelle Munoz, she has the most unique swing. And now I know a lot of you have seen this swing if you've been involved in college softball or any type of solid uh, softball, but she's literally running out of the box and then she swings into her second to third step. I'm not even kidding. It's the most incredible thing. And honestly, out there, if you can teach your kid to be a left handed, swinger like this your kid's going to be super successful and you want to know who else how successful she's been freshman in the pac 12 freshman of the year she was the first ua freshman to hit 439 in a single season since catlin low in 2004 hit 437 she won the batting championship more than 30 or 35 points higher than the second person she's a freshman she's crushing it for arizona so if you get a chance, again, those of you that are out there like to sport college sports, look into this. I'm telling you, she will blow your mind. And I like to highlight certain players often, but man, when you see somebody running, I mean, she's literally running and then at the last second she swings. It's hard enough to hit college softball, you know, just on the, just standing there at the plate, but to be running, and not just to be successful, but to be the best hitter in the Pac-12, kudos, man. So check that out. Again, if you've got a kid involved in softball, a little girl, and she's looking for somebody to idolize, you know, because we all do that when we're little. We copy our stances off of our favorite players. She's the one. I would absolutely unequivocally point your daughter to Janelle. Copy her style. Look at who she is. She's a great representative for college sports. Check it out. Now, in other news, we're going to talk about top 25. Uh, there's been a lot of top 25 uh, polls coming out over the last 30 days for college baseball. Uh, we're going to go over uh, today the men's. Next week, we'll go over the women's. But right now, we're going to go over the men's. Now, uh, real quick, again, just going to go over the top probably 10 to 15. Uh, I messed up. I was going to put some uh, visual here for you, but there's a lot of different polls. But a lot of polls have Texas, Vanderbilt, one and two. Now, Vandy, you lost Jack Leiter, so I'm curious how strong they're going to be, but they're still a strong organization. I'm just saying he's a great pitcher for your team. Texas has a lot of starters returning. Number three is Louisiana State. Number four is Texas Tech. Number five is Stanford. Number six is Florida. Number seven, Oklahoma State. Number eight, East Carolina. Number nine, Mississippi State, number 10, Notre Dame, number 11, Georgia Tech, number 12, Florida State, number 13, Texas, Texas Christian, number 15, UC Irvine, number 15, Louisiana Tech, so on and so forth. Again, different polls out there, ESPN, uh, there's different college ones. This particular poll I grabbed off of IG. So look into the polls. They're starting to get cooking. We're going to go into the top 25 again next week. 
dive down a little bit more regarding players and, and why we believe, you know, which teams will be good. But real quick, I want to highlight something for uh, Ole Miss baseball. What's cool about college is they upgrade their stadiums or get new stadiums often. Or they add to their current stadiums. Ole Miss baseball, Rebel Nation, uh, they've got a season ticket record, 7,775. This is posted on their Instagram and counting, so they're not even done yet. And they've added Club 4111. I don't know if you guys are calling it 41 hash 11. I don't know. But it's a new section at Swayze Field. It's for 200 ticket holders. It's just beyond the right field fence behind the students. Food, beverages, premium parking. Um, this is a bitchin' stadium. It really is, guys. And, you know, some NCAA stadiums, I feel like they're better in some respects than Major League Baseball stadiums. And I'm mainly talking uh, maybe how they present their history. Uh, if you go to YouTube, I know Vandy, Vandy Boys, Vanderbilt, uh, they're, they've got a YouTube video of a tour of their facility. Holy crap. Amazing. they got this beautiful wall of honoring past players and all their titles and accomplishments. But I've seen it with many different uh, colleges. It's super fun. I'm just saying if you're like, hey, I don't have nothing to watch. Again, I'm always going to be pushing you guys to learn about baseball. Go to YouTube. Just look up stadium tours for college, your favorite college team. Super fun to watch. But it's just, you know, again, um, this actually leads me into something else I want to talk about. I kind of wish Major League Baseball would create some type of like a, a fan alumni program. Because when you look at college baseball, the alumni programs are so phenomenal. And you, it makes sense why they're packing in stadiums. I mean, look at the college football side. Good Lord, you got 100,000 plus people packing in stadiums. And do they worry about selling tickets? They never have a problem worrying about selling tickets. Doesn't matter how good the team's doing. It's just um, when you build an alumni, you're building generations and generations of fans. I think that's where Major League Baseball really needs to focus on. How often do you focus on the generational relationships? I know it's a small thing. I know some of you might be like, that doesn't matter to me. But in the grand scheme of things for marketing and attracting your fans and making the sport fun, I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Um, in other news, let's move on. Um, Baltimore Orioles, what I really like about Baltimore is they've got a good farm system, but at L.A. Richmond from Oregon State, he was a beaver. Uh, he is probably going to end up arriving in the major leagues in 2022 as their catcher. He's a phenomenal ta a talent. Uh, let's see, in the minors, he hit 285 with a 397 on base percentage. In college, in 2018, he hit 408. And in 2019, he hit 411. The dude has a freaking fantastic swing. Um, I'm not going to say like Torkelson. Torkelson's more of a power swing guy. This guy's a left-handed catcher who can really hit the ball. So I'm really excited, wondering if this is his year. And and I'm telling you, man, Baltimore just looks like the team. They just need to add more pieces. I know some of you are out there laughing going, Baltimore sucks. Hey, dude, they weren't last place in 2020. Red Sox were, which a lot of people don't talk about. The Red Sox went from last to first in 2021. So how the coach of the Rays got coach of the year over – Red Sox coach. I don't know. I'm just saying. It doesn't make sense. I would think a coach of the year takes a team that isn't good and makes them great. The Rays are good every year. It's like saying Aaron Boone's going to be the coach of the year for the Yankees. The Yankees are going to be good every year. It doesn't, you know, Dodgers are going to be good every year. It, it kind of hard to give coach of the year when you have a loaded team. You know what I'm saying? Like coach of the year, you got to give it to Gabe Kapler. Look what he did to San Francisco. But, again, I'm not going to go down that uh not going to go down that rabbit hole, but let's move on to other news. We're going to talk about Blitzball and Wiffleball. Um, I grew up Wiffleball. Blitzball is becoming more and more popular. There are certain social media uh, people that are making it more and more popular. But what I want to say is um, I want to give a shout-out to um, – definitely give a shout-out to a Wiffleball on Instagram. Um, I give shout-outs for people all the time on Instagram. Uh, blitz ball and wiffle ball, the difference I see mainly is wiffle ball, you're closer and the ball's definitely dancing all over the place. Uh, blitz ball, I've seen it more going side to side, but what's great with blitz ball is you can, it looks like you throw it faster and you can be further back. So I like that too. I like both. I think both are super fun to do, but my point is 
is during the off season right now, especially with the lockout, what are we doing? What are you doing to entertain yourself with baseball? Dude, there's wiffle ball leagues still going on. There's non wiffle ball and blitz balls nonstop. I mean, in fact, both of these just, when you get a chance at your local rec center or gym, use the basketball gym if no one's using it. I mean, just don't slide. But what I want to do is give a shout out to uh, a tavern. I nonstop, they have wiffle ball tournaments. Yeah. And it's in a great spot. If you want to avoid the winter, wherever you're at, Michigan, New York, you want to have it better, you go down to Florida. Uh, these guys, Florida. Sarasota Wiffle Ball League. Giving a shout out to these guys. Been following them on Instagram. I love these guys. Uh, they got a Wiffle Ball League cash tournaments. It's almost mid January, and these guys are playing cash tournament Wiffle Ball at a tavern. But these guys are consistent. And what I'm saying is there's a ton of these Wiffle Ball leagues I've seen pop up in the last year or two, especially with the popular kids from uh, uh, that were on Fox recently on IG for their Wiffle Ball, um, which I follow all the time. And watch their. I just watched their World Series. You know, you're seeing a lot more wiffle ball like programs. But when I go to their IG account, they maybe got like five followers and three photos in two years. So that's not necessarily who I want to support. I want to support be there consistent. Hey man, I know I don't got the biggest podcast in the world, but I'm consistent. I'm always going to be giving you guys stuff on the daily, on the weekly podcast. So being consistent matters to me because I'm that way too. So. When I point out Sarasota Wiffle Ball League on IG, these guys are consistent. They're playing in mid-January. They're all year round. That's what I'm talking about. So you can't sit there and complain that there's nothing going on and anything like that with sports, with relation to your baseball. Listen, Lightham's going on right now, and the round robin's becoming awesome. So if you're not watching that, it's only $24 more on your Major League package. Don't tell me you don't got $24 more. I mean, $24, that's... in that's what a few hours at the bar so anyhow look into it check those guys out on ig follow them and if you get a chance make plans to go down there in uh, sarasota florida and stop by the their tavern and and support them again we like to lift people up on this channel uh why not and in relation to lifting up is over the line in san diego i've been telling you guys about this for months start Getting your tickets to fly to San Diego in July. Over the line happens. It's on Fiesta Island. You haven't really experienced I don't care where in the world you've played over the line. you got to experience it in San Diego. This is the greatest place to see over the line. It's a great tournament. But again, I've told you on other podcasts, this is not for the family. They have the bees. Don't bring bottles. Don't bring babies. So they do have rules. This is an adult crowd. This isn't spring break where you're drunk out of your mind. This is over the line there is drinking there but how can i say it it's an adult atmosphere so check those guys out now um a big person that's a free agent right now for you know it's it's god it's tough talking for agency right now because you know why the only free agent that's really been a splash lately is the dodgers signed eddie alvarez uh, he's a multi-sport olympic medalist uh he was with the marlins for two years and he batted 188 that's our free agent news that's why we're pissed off at the lockout because uh, that's our big news so with free agents there's a ton of free agents out there and that's going to lead us into talking about uh, Suzuki he's a 27 year old outfielder played in the Japan League in 2000 played appearances since 2018 he's batting 319 with a 435 on uh, on base percentage he helped Japan beat the USA for gold in the Olympics Ooh, little little stinger there uh, the Giants have been the front runner. Uh, they've had numerous video meetings with him. Um, but there's other teams like Texas, Seattle, Red Sox, Toronto, New York Yankees. They're also into the negotiation. So that's an interesting fit. I mean, dude, Seattle. Everyone better be paying attention to Seattle because I know people up in Washington know what I'm talking about. And I was surprised months ago when it showed Seattle fans because I'm in Oregon. And it showed pretty much all over. Uh, hey, my dog. Uh, Oregon, Idaho, I mean, all the way up to Alaska. I mean, it was just amazing how much the fan base is here. It's not just in one geographic area. It's not just in Seattle. It's everywhere. So <clears throat> my question is, and I've, we've talked about this before in the past, Dave Dombrowski, the president of baseball operations for the Philadelphia Phillies, has talked about he wants to upgrade pitching and outfield. That's his focus. 
his name is not in the hat. I have not heard anything about Seiya Suzuki for Philadelphia. He's an outfielder. I don't know where to go with this. Um, if you're going to put that out to your fans and you didn't get in, you didn't win the negotiations with Max, how serious is the Phillies? I mean, how feel, how serious are the Phillies organization about being a competitive team this year? I don't know. I haven't heard anything from Philadelphia for that player. But here's what's interesting. The designated hitter, rather you're for it or not, is a serious point of conversation for the CBA. There's a lot of talk that it's going to happen. There's also talk of expanded playoffs. That was pushed by the owners. But if the DH comes in the National League, it really puts things in a weird perspective because as a team, you pretty much got the red pill and the blue pill. You're taking both. Um, if you understand what I'm saying. If the DH goes through the National I mean, American League, it's they're like, yeah, we already got the DH. They're not going to get rid of the DH. They're going to add to it. They're going to make it universal. And like I said before, it's going to be, if it happens this year, they're going to call it, the National League now has a universal DH. Then the next year, they'll be like, universal DH is here. And then the third year, they're going to be finally be calling it the DH. I'm telling you, that's going to be the tagline. Everyone's going to be using that universal team for the longest time. But if you're American League team, it's not that big a deal right now deciding how to load up your team. National League, again, you got the red pill and the blue pill. What are you going to do? If the DH goes through, who are we going after? If the DH does not go through, who are we going after? I mean, think about it. National League gets the DH. Nelson Cruz makes sense in Colorado. Dude, that would be awesome. Kyle Schwarber, even though he does play outfield, but Albert Pujols. You're looking at all these players that usually are just restricted to the American League. Yeah, they could play the field, but it also narrows down your opportunities. You're pretty much down to 15 teams with DH right now if you're a player and you're a free agent. If it goes to the National League, I mean, it makes it very, very interesting, your options. So, we'll have to wait and see. I do believe the lockout will not impact the regular season. And I think when the lockout is finalized, things are going to be moving really, really, really quick uh, in regards to news. Because once that's released, all the signings are just going to be all popping. Now, here's a little, little gem for you guys. Clayton Kershaw. Let's talk about Clayton. Uh, he was spotted recently at a Mavericks game. So, of course, uh, you know, you get the speculation that he's going to sign with the Rangers. The Rangers have done a lot in the offseason in regards to offense. They haven't really addressed their pitching, which they have a horrible pitching staff. New stadium, always been a competitive organization. Actually, the last couple years is some of the worst they've been in their organizational history. But Clayton Kershaw was spotted at a Mavericks game. Now... This is going to lead me to, uh, this is going to be tying into Ken Rosenthal later, later, but this is what I love and what I hate about baseball news. Just because the guy goes to a Mavericks game in Dallas doesn't mean he's signing with the Rangers, but sometimes it does. We don't know. We're not Clayton Kershaw. So the fans were like, ooh, ooh. Dodger fans are probably like, no, no, no. Ranger fans are like, yeah. Um, Rangers is a better pitcher's park than Los Angeles. It is. It's about middle of the pack when it comes to home runs and offense. Dodgers won a very offensive stadium. So Clayton does live in Dallas. He's home. He's done everything he needs to do in his career on the West Coast. He lives in Dallas. I think he has two homes there. Does it make sense for him to stay home in Texas? Yes. The Rangers are pushing and trending upwards like Seattle and the Padres. These organizations that are trying to get there. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But uh, seeing Clayton Kershaw as a free agent for one, and then seeing him for two, possibly going to another team, kind of weird. If you're, you know, if you, we're all used to him in Dodger Blue. We'll wait and see how it pans out, but it'd be interesting to see him in a Rangers uniform. Now, before I go into other news, I want to talk about, you know, in the regular season, there's. We don't have the WBC, which really frustrates me. I love the World Baseball Classic. I think that is one of the best things for Major League Baseball. But uh, what we have, or what my proposal is, is why don't we have Japanese or Nippon Baseball, the KBO, because those are both coincide with Major League's season. Japan Baseball is the closest thing to Major League Baseball you're going to get in regards to their schedule and competition. 
uh, KBOs right there. But what I'm proposing is why don't we have Japanese ball, KBO, and some AAA playing two or four like showcase games or round robin, whatever you want to do, like more, more of a tournament. But it would just be nice to see how our AAA players measure up against international players. Okay, yeah, we're not doing World Baseball Classic. Well, until Major League Baseball figures that out, because with Corona, it's making the World Baseball Cl Classic basically not happening. Same thing with Australian baseball, the ABL. They're not playing this year because of Corona. But why can't we have that? Uh, I just think it would be cool since we have no ABL, we have no WBC. Why not throw that together? doesn't hurt anything and then Mark Kotze in other news is the manager of the Oakland Athletics I don't know I don't know nothing about Mark as a manager uh, you know it's a former player I mean he's not that old I mean Mark can probably get up there and swing the pine uh, but Oakland's going through a lot right now we've talked about in the past how Oakland you got Dave Stewart trying to do a revitalization program and movement for the current stadium, you've got the waterfront plans that have been there since 2018, 2017, that are basically dying in the water. You've got an Oakland organization going to Las Vegas, at least reportedly four different plus trips to this point, meeting with Las Vegas to possibly move the Oakland Athletics to Las Vegas. The Raiders did. Kind of following suit. And then you got Portland in the mix too. So Oakland, if you're an Oakland A's fan right now, I'm sorry, man. I feel for you. I went through the same thing as a uh, pod, uh, do, uh, excuse me, not Padre or Dodger fan, but as a Charger fan in San Diego. It was about 15, 20 years of BS like that going on in San Diego. We're going to move to South San Diego. We're going to build a stadium here. We're going to go to Las Vegas. We're going to move. You know, they do this crap to you as a fan, and it frustrates you because they don't know what they're doing. They're just looking for the biggest monetary advantage, is my opinion. But um, it is what it is. Oakland fans, I am sorry, guys. Now, when we talk about Let's talk about other news. Lightum, uh, the Dominican League that's going on. We've got the four teams in the round robin. Um, there's a lot going on. And what has happened recently is Fernando Tatis has popped up on the radar in a Lightum post. And it was just really, like, quick. But there's talk of him playing possibly in the round robin. Well, the round robin's almost over. So at this point, it would definitely be loading up your team. Uh, his dad is manager of the Estrellas or Orientals which are in the playoffs and his dad hinted back in December about this, but I mean, is he going to really come over and play? I don't know. Now in the, in light of this year, you've had Albert Pujols, Yasuo Puig, Josh Reddick, Victor Robles, Wellington Castilla, Yerman Mercedes, Marcelo Zuna is on the Gigantes right now, which is the hottest team in the round Robin. Uh, their offense is phenomenal. And then if you talk about Fernando Tatis, there's so much more. Um, Melky Cabrera. Uh, I've seen so many major leaguers, former and current, playing in this league. It's a competitive league. It's very competitive. Uh, but Albert Pujols, not so good. Guess what he batted for this season? And he's no longer playing because his team was eliminated and is not involved in round robin. But uh, think about what he did in L.A. for the Angels. Yeah, he batted 246 this season. Yasuo yeah, Puig, who signed a million-dollar contract with the KBO this season to play, he batted 176. So, I don't know, guys. Uh, you know, we talk Puig a lot, and I know some people don't like him. I'm not saying if you like him or not. He's a very important person for Major League Baseball. I see him trying even harder this year. Past podcasts, we've talked about how his posts on Instagram recently, he's gone through this reflection period. Four years, he's talked about how things that broke him back in 2018 and 19 and how he grew through 20 and 21 and his eyes are really open. I think he's, I mean, again, love or hate uh, uh, Yasiel Puig. You have to look at his, dude, he was human traffic to come here. Seriously, the guy was scared for his life coming here. It's an incredible story. We've got the video posted on YouTube at Baseball News Club, but a reason I like to talk about him is it's America. It's about coming here, freedom, getting the opportunity. Some could say that he was spoiled with his talent early on and he didn't really take advantage of his talent and his opportunity in Los Angeles. But I think through the journey the last couple of years, it's really hit him that he's got to work his ass off. He's got to prove himself now. He's no longer someone that teams just want. 
And that was proven last year in 2021 when nobody wanted him. So he's work. I followed him the last couple years on Instagram. 2021, his workout was just meteor, mediocre, meteor. <laughs> um, this year, I've never seen him work out so hard. I mean, he's doing advanced body weight, uh, weight exercises. So hence the $1 million contract. Congratulations to Rachel Luba, his agent. Um, she's a great agent, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully it works out for him. Hopefully he's able to latch on to a major league team. We'll wait and see. But it kind of ties into Trevor Bauer and Ken Rosenthal. All these guys are in the same boat when it comes to how Major League Baseball is possibly changing their view on certain players and their attitudes. Not that it's right or wrong. Major League Baseball is interesting right now. So let's move on to other news. Okay, let's let's talk about A-Rod. I don't really like talking about A-Rod because I'm not a fan of the guy. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw an A-Rod jersey on anybody. But he's in the news. ESPN is announcing there's a possibility he might get his own show. He's not doing any major league stuff on Sunday anymore. Uh, kind of like Manning Gate with the NFL. Uh, ESPN, or what Dan Patrick calls it, the mothership. I love it when Dan Patrick calls it that. By the way, Dan Patrick, I'm putting a challenge out there. I have way better hair than you, dude. Way better. And I always have. And I'll put my hair up to you any day, Dan Patrick. I love Dan Patrick, by the way. A, a Road is supposed to get a show similar to the Monday Night Football show that has Peyton and uh, Eli. Uh, now, Peyton and Eli only did 10 to 17 weeks, so it's unknown how this is going to work out because uh, David Cohn is also thrown in the mix. So there's David Cohn talk. There's A Road, a -Road talk. Uh, so it would be mixed up with Carl Ravitch and Eduardo Perez. I don't know how it's going to come about, but that's the current talk right now. I just don't understand how A-Rod keeps getting jobs. I really don't. Um, but that's... A-Rod probably leads into partial frustration with the fans, what happens with uh, Ken Rosenthal. But we'll go into that in a little bit. Let's move on to the next news. Okay, something came up in the rumor mill. I love rumor mill during the offseason because sometimes there's a little bit of truth and sometimes it's just a bunch of bullshit. Uh, but... This one I like a lot, Matt Champion or Matt Chapman to the New York Yankees. That's something that's been tossed out there by a uh, actually a uh, former uh, Major League GM floated that out there. I thought that was very interesting, very interesting. I'm like Chapman to the Yankees. The Yankees just need a few more piece, pieces. I mean, they got good pitching, they got a good core team. I don't, you know, we'll tie into this later. I think the Yankees are right there in there just like they are every year. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, now CBA, I want to talk a little bit about the CBA. What's interesting with the CBA this off season is, you know, social media finds the suspensions, the sticky substance. Again, we talked about how Trevor Bauer's name won't be mentioned, but this leads me, we're going to start talking about Ken Rosenthal right now. It makes me wonder is major league, is this a prelude to things that come with major league baseball or is this just one of those hyped up news things? Um, but, again, let's talk about the CBA. Okay, in the CBA, there's actually, we've, we've, we've been talking about the CBA a lot lately. Um, I read the CBA all the time. I have the contract right here. I love reading about the CBA. I love understanding what they're discussing. But there is a rookie hazing pranks and clubhouse rituals um, attachment or addendum. It's attachment number 50 to the CBA from 2017. Um, so it is an agreement about how to treat and not go over the line because you look at like colleges when they do hazing with the fraternities and sororities and kids freaking die. So Major League Baseball wants to make sure like, hey, don't want anyone killed here. So the agreement, it touches on basically the Players Association will not challenge anything from the office of the commissioner. So if the commissioner decides that some type of hazing or prank went on too far it is at the discretion of the commissioner, which is Rob Manfred of Major League Baseball, uh, to determine if the violation is something that he can discipline. So it is something, uh, all discipline under the, under the policy by a club or the commissioner must be uh, for just cause in accordance with the article and based on agreement of the CBA. So any violation, again, this is something that is deemed, is this a workplace code of conduct question of harassment or discrimination? Is this hazing? Uh, because it's a slippery slope if you think about it if you've got certain players ha hazing a 
uh, a different type of player because of his lifestyle and who that player is, either his his sex preference, his his race. That's what they're kind of putting this in here is they want to make sure the players are professional and treat each other right. Hazing happens, but you know, bull hazing can sometimes lead to bullying. So again, this is about bullying. They don't want anything based upon anyone's race, gender, color, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, including offensive names, phrases, jokes about someone's conformity with gender, gender norms. So for those of you who didn't know, Major League Baseball is a very good organization. And it's that's good that you have something like that because that is what we would call nipping it in the butt early. You don't want behaviors to start from when they're rookies to you see those behaviors in the clubhouse in Major League Baseball. Obviously, they shouldn't be like this at all, uh, but human behavior, people uh, tend to be jerks. Now, one of the tough things with the CBA that's kind of frustrating is uh, rehabilitation. Uh, since it is a lockout, that means certain players, a lot of players, aren't able to rehabilitate at stadiums. That's going to put uh, some players in a tough position and push them back on their recovery time when they're going to be coming back. Um, it could it could impact them. It could ruin careers. I don't think it's that extreme. I'm sure they'll find other alternatives to rehab, but it just it sucks. It really sucks that this that's one part of the lockout that really sucks. Obviously, we're not getting baseball right now, so you shouldn't be whining about the lockout too much. I've talked about in the past how the chicken littles out there in the world are really upset. Guys, we have no freaking baseball right now. The only thing you're missing is the winter meetings and Rule Five draft, with you. none of you give a shit about anyhow, and salary arbitration. That one's fun. I like sal salary arbitration. I do like the winter meetings myself, but uh, I think we should do away with the Rule 5 draft. I think it's a big waste of time. Um, and again, they're going to be talking about another section. Uh, attachment number 52 to the 2017 CBA is the domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy. That's what, again, Trevor Bauer has fallen underneath. Marcel Azuna. Uh, there's a lot of that going to be ironed out and hashed out because it's becoming more you know a social media and everything and the way you know it happens from time to time there's nobody's perfect in this world there's going to be domestic problems but i'm glad that major league baseball has that and i have to under my understanding is that's a big part i'm sure they're going to be talking about it but obviously luxury tax uh you know salary sharing all that stuff's there the dh playoff expansion but again they don't have to really do much to adjust the CBA. Revenue sharing is always going to be there, guys. Always going to be there. Okay, so enough about the CBA. Let's move on to other things. Um, again, we talked about how the 14 playoff best record. This is being proposed by the owners. This is going on the CBA. So I lied. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the CBA. Uh, the owners proposed best record. AL, NL get a bye. Remaining division winners pick their wild card opponent. Higher seeded teams pick their wild card. Interesting. Okay, what I want to talk about now is Juan Soto. Not only do we love the guy who plays for the Washington Nationals, but he is actually got a little brother, Elian Soto, who's 16. Reportedly, the Washington Nationals are expected to sign him uh, as a free agent uh, in 2023. So I'm sitting there going, this guy's got a brother that can hit the ball great too? And how the hell did the Nationals get both of them? How... How is that possible the Nationals got both of these guys? But uh, Juan Soto is quite an interesting story in itself. I follow him on his IG account. Fabulous account, man. I love Juan Soto. He's such a family guy. so grounded. Um, just a regular dude. And he really loves baseball. You've seen it uh, throughout. You've seen him at the playoffs last year. He just loves the sport. And he's a phenomenal talent. I love the fact how he chokes up with two strikes. I hope a lot of young kids are learning from that. Cutting down his swing so he can be better at the plate. He's just one of the best players in baseball, definitely. But the Nats have his brother. Or they're going to be signing him. It's pretty ridiculous. I don't know much about his talent, but that's the news. So let's move on. We're going to talk about Ken Rosenthal. Now, before I talk about Ken Rosenthal, there's a lot of layers to it. Layers, donkey layers like onions i find it very interesting how the firestorm with ken rosenthal started now i'm all for news but i'm not for fake news 
Now I have to call out certain uh, media outlets for fake news on this one. I don't mind news reporting, but part of this felt like it was social media driven. Uh, the firestorm against Rob Manfred. Uh, basically what happened is Ro Ro Ken Rosenthal is no longer with Major League, will not be with Major League Baseball on the field in 2022. His contract is due to expire this year. But what happened is a couple news outlets, not all of them, a couple news outlets, their first tagline was about how, you know, the commissioner got rid of Ken Rosenthal. He didn't like him. Now, what, a year or two ago, Ken made some comments about the commissioner. He was, I guess, suspended for two or three months. But here's the theme. This is what I have about this. Is this a media created or media online created story i did a poll and the poll was is this story overhyped or is this bad for baseball it was about 40 60 40 percent it wasn't like 90 it wasn't overwhelming by fans a lot of people felt this was overhyped which i felt like it was overhyped now show me proof that the commissioner in major league baseball didn't renew his contract just because of his past comments against the commissioner. Prove that to me, because that was the media-driven tagline, and it might be true, but again, in this day and age, you gotta have proof, guys. We've already went through the bunch of crap with our presidency, it's hard to figure out what the fake news is with that, it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat, I'm not gonna get uh, political, but what I'm saying is, this is something created by social media or the news outlets, part of this. Uh, when I saw this, I was like, man, this is, you know, this is ridiculous. And I look I, I look at fans' comments on ESPN, MLB, and a lot of social media channels. I like to see the pulse of what's going on. There's a big movement to fire Rob Manfred, worst commissioner ever. Uh, and what's funny to me is like, this is what broke the straw on the camel's back? Ken Rosenthal? You went through the scandal in 2017, what he said about the trophy and every other thing he's done to make you uncomfortable, but this is going to get a movement. Now, I, I just want to let you know I'm on the fence with this. I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm a news reporter. I'm not going to tell you my full opinion, but to me, uh, it does look like this is self-created. And I, who knows, this might be the spark that lights the fire for change in Major League Baseball, but I doubt it. Commissioners going to bug C-League. Back to Peter Uberoth in the 80s, even Bar Giamatti for the short period. Um, they are who they are. They are a tool of the owners uh, and a tool of Major League Baseball. I don't think this is going to create change in Major League Baseball, but it's definitely brought light to how people are upset at the commissioner. I think this is just something that has been piled up over time, and this is just another item that just pissed off the fans. Now, let's be honest. Ken Rosenthal. Never, not a baseball player. He's just one of those media people. He's actually a baseball writer that's responsible for his votes for the Hall of Fame. We complain about the baseball writers and how they're ruining the sport when it comes to the Hall of Fame and other things. I, myself, and I'm just being honest, I didn't think anyone was a fan of this guy until this happened. Uh, you never see any posts with him. You never see any fans wearing shirts. I love Ken Rosenthal. No one really gives a shit. You don't see kids wearing bow ties. You know what I'm saying? So to me, when it happened, I just feel like it was the fans, because of the lockout, were frustrated because of what Rob's done in the past, how Major League Baseball's handled the scandals. Hey, the Yankees and Red Sox got caught cheating too, guys. You need to look into it. But is this just a, a knee-jerk reaction, or is this actual a movement that's going to change Major League Baseball? I love Major League Baseball, but hey, man, the whole t let's take a timeout in the middle of the World Series or All-Star Game for cancer. I mean, it's becoming so awkward now that it's like, okay, this has nothing to do with what we're doing right now, but I get it. So Major League Baseball, are we going through a change? We saw bat flipping. We saw dugout celebrations. We saw the sport changing. But it's always been a question, can Major League Baseball and the owners and the powers that be handle the change? Is Kez Rosenthal going to be one of those things? Now, Fox and ESPN, they've extended their contracts with uh, Major League Baseball into 2028. So for me... Uh, obviously, it's not about, you know, Ken and Fox News no longer going to be supporting baseball. So that's not really what's going on. I want the leaks. 
I want to know if this is true, that Rob Manfred, this is why you got rid of him. I want the leaks. And this, I'm holding social media, you people out there, on your feet under the fire. I don't want fake news on this crap. I know the news for baseball right now is slow, but it's very slippery slope when you use your powers of a media. If you're a, a media influencer and you've got a lot of followers, just like Trevor Bauer has been accused in the past of having his followers, he's sick them on people that he didn't like and his followers went after those people. That's wrong. That's a cowardice thing to do. Um, and I saw this a lot. I saw certain media outlets and their fans, once the media outlets put the tagline out there attacking Rob Manfred, you saw the hashtag fire Rob Manfred. Hey, I'm not a fan of Rob Manfred. I'm just saying it's a slippery slope and we have to be careful. So I want those leaks. So I don't want lame media or clickbait. I want the truth. So there is a lot of bandwagon that goes on on social media. And I follow a lot of top social media baseball reporting people. And it just takes one tagline and then the bandwagon starts. And there's a lot of that. And that's cool. If this is a spark that lights the fire that creates change in Major League Baseball, maybe it is. Or maybe this is just a bump in the road. I myself didn't think Ken Rosenthal was that important to, to all of us. I don't personally like listening to him because I've played the game. Anyone that's played the game, especially at a serious level in college, minor league, and major league, you always can listen to any reporter and eventually at some point pick up on the fact they've never played the game. There's just certain language, mannerisms, or certain understandings you only get if you've gone headfirst into a bag or you've done a diving catch or you understand the strategy in the field and what's going on and listening to your signs from your dugout. There's certain things you only know as a player, and Ken does not have that. That's why I've never been attracted to Ken Rosenthal. I've been like, okay, he's a good reporter. Don't get me wrong. Peter Gammon's a good reporter. But I couldn't get into the guy. I prefer someone who has baseball experience. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's not equal opportunity. Hey, man, I get it. But that's what I prefer. Because I can pick up on somebody. Because I've played the game for so long. I could pick up on somebody, pick up on somebody that doesn't really understand the game. Because they didn't play it. You have to play it to understand it. It's like surfing. You can't sit there and say, I'm a surfer because you went, rode a few waves one summer. No, you've got to do that every day. You've asked you to be, to me, a good surfer. you got to surf during the winter time, at least three or four seasons before you can even call yourself a surfer because that's the tough time. But again, you can't call yourself something unless you're, you know what I'm saying? Like I could talk to somebody that surfed maybe one year of their life and I can tell the difference between someone that surfs all the time just by the language. And that's all I'm talking about. I prefer somebody that has baseball experience even if it's one year i don't care but here's the question for you fans if ken rosenthal is replaced by ken griffey jr will you even give a crap anymore about fire rob manfred but there is a lot of people pissed off as well they should be now ken's comments when i read ken's comments it's just i appreciate everything it was just a gratitude for opportunity he did not point at rob manfred he didn't point at the fact that he made comments in the past he did it with grace and professionalism, which is what Ken Rosenthal is known for. But again, who leaked? His contract expired, people. We're in the CBA. We're in a lockout. The players always talk about progression, changing the sport. Every person that's had a contract non-renewed in Major League Baseball, you can go back with other media people uh, that announced in the, in the booth. A lot of times these guys are around for a long time, so when they are... The contracts aren't non-renewed. Everyone gets into the whole, ooh, what's going on? I mean, really, people, in this day and age, can we just make a change without there being drama behind it? Maybe Major League Baseball is listening to the players and going, you're right, we need change. We need to get rid of the bow tie guy. Let's put in somebody else. Let's be more progressive. If we're asking the sport to be more progressive, this is part of it? Or is this just because Ken made comments on Rob Manfred? Is that... I find it very hard for them to fire somebody or not fire, uh, non-renew their contract just because of comments. Comments. He's popular in the sport. He's a baseball writer. I don't know. It's hard to tell at this point. I'm still on the fence. I'm still playing devil's advocate with it, but I'm leaning more towards the fact that this is part of the change of baseball. I really believe the owners have part of this decision. The players have part of this decision. You don't see a lot of major league players jumping up going, hey, Fire Rob Manford. Yeah, keep Ken. You don't see any major league active players really pulling for him. So that tells you something. You know what I'm saying? Like if it was Ken Griffey and they did this, I guarantee all the players would be standing up saying something in the Players Association. This isn't Ken Griffey. This is Ken Rosenthal, bow tie, wearing guy that doesn't even play the game. 
take it for a grain of salt, man. But I'm saying you need to chew on this a little bit longer because I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but again, the CBA, the players talk about progressing this game and that's all they want to do is bring good entertainment to the fans. Maybe it's time to replace the old and bring in the new. I'm just saying it's something to think about. So again, I'm going to be harsh, but personally, I prefer someone that's played the game talking to me on the, and you know what, when you look at, um, let me see, ESPN, perfect example. They've got their announcers for softball, former great softball players like Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough. These are all former NCAA uh, softball players. They know their stuff. They know what they're talking about. And you can hear it in their voice. And they know these players. And the players, another thing you have to think about, the players gravitate to former players. When Jenny Finch is on the field interviewing people for softball, these softball girls are just like, oh, Jenny Finch. Oh my God, she dude, she's one of the greatest pitchers in the history of NCAA Division One softball. She's phenomenal. That's what I'm talking about. I like that aspect. I'm not saying eliminate all media people that don't know baseball, but for me, the way the Hall of Fame's been handled by baseball writers, the less we have baseball writers involved in our sport, the better, in my opinion. So maybe we need to take a play a page out of the playbook. And ESPN and NCAA softball analysts. Maybe they're going to go towards more players. I don't know. Now, if they went to somebody that's a non-player again, then yeah, you're going to be like, yeah, he was. they got rid of him because of his comments to Rob. But I'm just saying, I, I, it's just weird. Um, and for those of you in social media, yeah, I see a lot of knee-jerk reactions. Uh, the sky is falling. I see a lot of chicken littles out there. You know, people out there that bubble wrap their cupcakes. Uh to me, I, it doesn't bother me. I think this is all part of the changes in Major League Baseball and progressing uh, out with the old. Same thing with uh, Tim McCarver, who was doing the World Series for years. I couldn't stand that guy. Uh, he really didn't understand the game. And it's like A-Rod. It, you know, fans pick up on it. You just don't understand the game. you got to talk in fluidity and take from your past experiences of playing the game and put it into motion with your analyst, your, what you're presenting. And you don't get that from Ken. Because he doesn't play the game. He never has. I don't think he's even played Blitzball. So anyways, let's move on to some other news. Now what I want to talk about is the, the divisions. We have went over the division reviews. And as we go through the offseason, we're going to talk about how teams are building themselves. I've always talked about this, that I always measure teams from after the World Series, the first day after the World Series, what are teams doing? And we've talked about this before. Uh, Houston Astros went and signed Dusty Baker. Uh, Padres went and got, hey, they went and took the Hayes coach. Padres look much better. Uh, look at what Max Scherzer did. Look at what Cohen did for the New York Mets before the CBA lockout. So you see teams, to me, that's aggressive behavior. That is trying to make your team and organization and fan base happier and better. And that's why I give Dom, David Dombrowski a hard time for Philadelphia. He came out and said, hey, I'm going to give pitching and outfield. So far, he's not doing it. Philadelphia is right there, man. I'm telling you, Philadelphia is just a few pieces away of being a badass team uh, and owning that division. I mean, it'd be nice if... Oh, there's the end of my video. Sorry. God, I love that. I love that sound. It's the greatest sound on earth. <laughs> Gets me misty eyed. But uh, so with these teams we talked about, what are you doing in off season? Right now it sucks because of the lockout. Because, but I tell you guys, once the lockout's over, it's going to be a freaking frenzy of free agent signings because the teams are going to understand. Like I said, red pill, blue pill. We have universal DH. Totally changes our approach on a lot of players we're going to put. Nationally, it could be very very fun. Uh, we can get some players over here we've never seen before in the National League because they've always been restricted over to the American League because they can't field. And baseball's been changing. And it makes sense. Either keep it or get rid of it. Because, again, we now have Frank Thomas and Edgar Martinez going to the Hall of Fame, players with a ton, 60%, 70% of their career riding the pine. That's not fair to National League teams. Think about it. You're like, man, we lost Pujols because of this. If there's a DH... In the National League, Pools probably would have stayed with St. Louis. Um, or maybe not. I'm just saying. I'm speculating here. But at the same time, 
DH is a good thing, guys. Either we keep it or we get rid of it. That's where we're at at this point. And if we get rid of it, I guess the way to look at it, is it better to make it universal or is it better to get rid of it? It's better to keep it universal, guys. I'm 51. There's no such thing as traditionalist. It's good for the sport. And you can't tell me seeing Nelson Cruz in Colorado is not going to be bitching. Uh, it's going to help players out a lot. It's going to help out with injuries. I like it. But when we talk about division reviews, what if? What if DJ LeMahieu for the Yankees hit a little bit better? He had 678 plate appearances at 268, one of his worst careers. His first two seasons in New York were absolutely fabulous. Hit the crap out of the ball. I don't think you're going to see DJ hit 268 again in New York. You're probably going to get a 300 hitter again. I just don't see it. The guy's too good of a hitter. But again, it's one of those things is what if. Uh, just like, you know, on paper. And this is why I have a problem with people predicting the World Series now. Because on paper versus what goes into the playoffs is two different things. The Dodgers are perfect an example. No Clayton. Uh, no Carrot Top. No Trevor Bauer. I mean, you didn't have Derek, Dustin May. Excuse me. You didn't have those players. But what if the Dodgers had that pitching staff? Well, it is what it is. You have what you have. The Braves had everything clicking and the Red Sox at the right time. So they're, they were the fun teams to watch. Um, you can also say Jose Abreu for the White Sox, even though they're in a first place team in a weak division. 261, uh, but 272 total bases for the former MVP. He's a great player. But what about if he hit a little bit better? Would that would have made a difference in playoffs? Again, we're just talking one player. I'm just saying what ifs. Uh, a big what if that probably be more or less what I'm talking about right now is the New York Mets. Uh, McNeil, Lindor, uh, all those guys had career worst seasons. What if they hit just a little bit better, 20 points higher? I'm talking about a totally different result in that division. Um, another person is Diddy for Philadelphia. He had 209. What if he had like a regular season? Would that have been enough just to get them? Because think about it. If, if Diddy would have had a regular season, I'm sure he'd have been responsible at least for, what, three, six, maybe eight games responsible for game-winning hits or put him ahead. But batting 209, that's not going to help your team. But they were right there. Again, what if that player had his normal season? Blake Snell, 4.20 uh, ERA. What if? What if he actually had a really good season? Probably wouldn't have help the Padres I mean Padres pretty much folded it in that's why they went and got a new coach but again you're what if they had Trevor Bauer what if Cody Bellinger didn't bat 165 I mean the Dodgers are still loaded but with that he did so good in the playoffs but would that made a difference in the division where they would have won the division and San Francisco would have been responsible for the wild card I don't know um and you know Dustin May dude he arrived he arrived last year and this year that kid was on point to have a great 21 and then you know Mike Trout I don't think would have made a difference but the lying and what went on with the Angels organization with his real injury has me concerned for this season what if Trout was traded with Cody Bellinger like the Dodgers traded Cody and a bunch of players and money to get Trout would you scream that's not fair I would uh, that's a pretty loaded team over there. But again, these are just what ifs because you're, you're wondering like, what if these teams played better? What if the, these team, these players played up to what they were supposed to play? Uh, their capabilities. Who knows? I mean, what if Toronto just squeaked in there? I really believe that Toronto, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, if they got a chance to get in the playoffs, they would have shook up the foundation. Uh, it would have been fun as hell to watch. Toronto's a fabulous team. But again, what ifs? So let's see if I got any other news, but I think we're going to wrap up here shortly. Okay, I think I want to wrap up. One of the things I want to bring up for you guys is, uh, you know, please comment. Uh, please support us. Uh, we really need your help uh, to grow. I appreciate all the fans that are on YouTube right now. We're approaching 1,300. Uh, it's been great. It's been a great ride. I'm glad we are where we're at, but we want to grow more. But uh, what I want to talk about is, you know, stay with baseball, guys. Encourage your friends and family. There's friends I run across that are like, ah, I haven't, I stopped watching 94 because of the strike. Listen, baseball's back, man. Baseball's better than ever. Last year, there were so many good teams. I feel like at the All-Star break, everybody had a chance to make the playoffs. 
That's why I agree with expanding the playoffs. It just sucks seeing a team like, uh, you know, the Philadelphias and Cincinnati's just not make it. And I know what you're saying, like, well, if they can't make it in the playoffs, they shouldn't but deserve to be there. Well, with that attitude, we might as well just narrow it down to six teams, you know, for the playoffs. Uh, but what I'm saying is it's good for baseball. And I really believe we're going to come out of this uh, CBA soon. Uh, we got the Hall of Fame announced in a few weeks. And again, we talked about that. If there's going to be a PD player getting in, it's got to be Bonds. Maybe even uh, this is Schilling's year. But if it's non-PD related, we got Hilton. Um, we got Jeff Kent. We got Scott Rowland. Those are the three I think they're really pushing for first ballot. Or not for first ballot, but to get in. I think A-Rod doesn't have a chance. Uh, anyone PD related. But again, this CBA, this season's really going to tell us what's going on in baseball with the Hall of Fame and how we view PEDs. I honestly think that baseball can, can't can take this much. I think right now, grasping and embracing the designated hitter is a big step for Major League Baseball. So uh, getting rid of Ken Rosenthal is probably a positive move for Major League Baseball, depending who they replace. I mean, who's going to be in there now? Um, Ken's not going away. still with Fox. Fox, again, is still signed on, I think, till 2028 for MLB. Same with ESPN. But... I, I'm just hoping this is part of the progression, but again, I saw a lot of knee-jerk reactions, uh, fake news, uh, saying that that's why Major League Baseball fired him, or didn't renew his contract. I keep saying fire, I'm sorry. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's why they, they did do it, but I don't see the proof. I think this is just, honestly, baseball going through a change. They didn't want to renew the guy's contract. Think about how long he's been there. He, he probably makes so much money in that position, they're probably like, you know what? We need to save some money because Major League Baseball has been doing this for the last two years because of Corona. Let's just get somebody in there new that we can pay cheaper. It could be that too because that's what it's about. Revenue sharing in the CBA. Luxury tax. Owners looking for more money. Players looking for more money. There's a lot of, I call it, tugging the taffy negotiations. This is what's going on. Maybe this is part of it. You know, maybe the, I don't think people are looking at it going, maybe the Players Association were fine with getting rid of Ken too. We don't know the backstory is all I'm saying. But he gone. Bow tie's gone. We'll have somebody new on the field. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to wrap up this podcast. Again, please support us on all of our channels. Please download. We're on Instagram, Baseball News Club, and Ball and Play. Uh, again, this is Sesma signing out. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to our podcast.